Welcome to the Health Coach Nation podcast. My name is Haley Rowe, and I'm a sales and marketing coach and LinkedIn lead generation service provider. I work with health, life, and mindset coaches and online service-based business owners to help them get more sales, shift their time to the client generating activities instead of just the busy work, and overcome that social media overwhelm. Let's get into the show. If you're ready to take on your next paying clients, I have good news. My free four basics of client attraction and how to stand out class is live at hayleyrow.com slash client hyphen attraction. In the class, you're going to learn the top two traits I recommend for most coaches and entrepreneurs if they really want to turn this into a career. You're going to learn how you can build demand for your services and stop getting crickets on your posts. You're going to learn the sales roadmap I used to improve my sales conversion rate and help my clients do the same. And you're going to learn so much more. So go to HaleyRowe.com slash client hyphen attraction and get your copy of the class today. Hey everyone, today I am going live with Robin Wynn. She's an author, she's a human design expert. She's gonna share more about herself in just a second. But we thought it would be kind of fun to talk about my chart and how it might apply also, you know, if you're a coach or you are somebody who wants to help your clients better, um, sometimes understanding them on a deeper level like this might come in handy. So you're gonna see Robin in action here. We're going to maybe ask her some questions about human design, and we'll go from there. So, Robin, why don't you just share a little bit about yourself and how you got into this, and we will get started. Yeah, thank you for having me. I was started out as a body worker, then became a psychotherapist for 20 years, and then I discovered human design, and it shifted completely how I work with people, how I understand people. It gave me direct access to people's challenges and their uh, strengths. And I could just bypass a lot of time spent trying to understand someone. So it, it was a huge gift. In fact, such a big gift that I stopped seeing psychotherapy clients who wouldn't, um, who didn't want to have their chart looked at because it just didn't make any sense to me. We could just cut through so much. We could understand so much. And then I eventually left doing psychotherapy, went full on into human design and started writing books about human design and seeing really, I really got that I, as a single person, couldn't touch as many people as I wanted to touch individually. I needed to help the people who were helping people understand how to use this tool and really bring this new information or this new way of accessing who we are and how we're here to thrive really is the issue. How can we thrive when we have so much conditioning and so many stories coming at us and so many beliefs about who we are and who we should be learning to start to separate out what we've been told about ourselves and who we actually are and how we can actually show up in the world in a way that works for us and is of benefit to others. So that's, that's kind of my, my winding route here. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So now I have a training program to train coaches, therapists, healers to use human design with their clients. Excellent. All right. And so let's talk about this tool. Let's talk about what does it look like and how do we use it? And we can do our examples. So you want to kind of just kick us off? Sure. Yeah. Let me just start by saying that one of the things I discovered as I started to be in coaching groups was that coaches coach what works for them, right? And that's maybe true to their design or not. But I was in groups where coaches were saying, do this, do this, do this. And it wasn't right for the person, it was right for the coach, but not right for the person. So what I discovered was really when you know your own design, and I'm going to talk about your design here, when you know your own design, then you know, and then you know your client's design, then you know what differences there might be and how to best support them. So I'm going to start off by just talking about you for a little bit. So in human design, we take your birth time, your birthplace, and we 
it's kind of a combination of astrology, the I Ching, the Hindu chakra system, um, and the quantum physics, the Kabbalah. And what we do is we take your birth time and in astrology, like when's your birthday? Um, October 18th. So you are in astrology, you are a Libra? Yep. Yeah. So in human design, instead of the the 12 signs, we have 64 hexagrams from the I Ching. So in human design, your sun, instead of being in Libra, is in the gate 32. So these are the planets and these are the hexagrams of the I Ching. Let me just back up. The I Ching is an ancient Chinese system of... Uh, checking into the into the cosmos to see um, it's kind of a a way of understanding the universe and, and what direction you might want to take in your life. So I won't go into that too much, but there's 64 of these hexagrams and each one has a packet of information. So this 32 is all about big dreams. What what are, what are your big dreams? You're here to understand for yourself your big dreams, but also to shine light on other people's big dreams, help people see what what is your big dream. This is the biggest energy in your chart. I mean, how incredible is that for you as a coach to have that energy, right? That light that you're bringing. Let me begin by saying every chart is perfect and equal. There's no hierarchy here. We need, it's like a giant puzzle. We need each person's puzzle piece. We need you to bring your light. We need your clients to bring their light. So there's no better or worse chart. And wow, for you as a coach, as a, as a leader, to be shining the light of what's your big dream. Now, your earth, we use the earth in human design. Your earth is in the gate 42. This is a gate of completion. You're here to bring completion to the big dream. Cool. Right? You're, this, so this is, what, this is the time of your birth, the planets in the hexagrams at the time of your birth. This is the what we call the unconscious three months prior to your birth. So... We put those two together and we get this body graph that shows where you have definition, where you have consistent access to energy in your chart. So when that 32, when two of these hexagrams or gates come together, they form a channel. So here you have this channel of big dreams and the channel of business. You are here to bring business to life, to be, bring those big dreams into the business world. So, of course, you're working in a business context. Wow, interesting. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. So let's let's look where that, that uh, 54, you have it in the Neptune, which is your spiritual path, conscious and unconscious. So this is your spiritual path. Like you're in alignment with yourself. Wow. That's very interesting. Does this resonate? Does it? Yeah. Fit? I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense based on what I do. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I love the completion piece. I'm definitely somebody who likes the full circle and completion and taking a project from start to finish. So definitely makes sense. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. So you've got the gate 53, which is the gate of starting. And the 42 is the gate of completing finishing. So you've got the whole cycle. You like to start things and bring them to completion. So you're going to be helping people as they start a new cycle, bring it to completion. Wow. Start a new business, right? Be successful in that business. You're not just saying, let's start and, you know, how are we going to finish this? You're, you're doing the whole cycle. You're seeing this as a whole cycle. So that gate 53 is in Mercury, your unconscious Mercury, 
This is a very tiny chart on my screen, so I'm hoping I'm, I'm getting the right one there. Um, let me see if I can make it bigger. Uh, so you like to talk about what are we going to start? How do we start this? Let's look at starting this big dream, right? And then the the earth, the ground comes in. Let's finish it. Let's talk about how we're going to start it and let's finish it. Let's bring it to fruition. Nice. Your your unconscious, your conscious Mercury, Mercury is what we like to talk about, is in this gate 43. Now, this gate 43 is also in Pluto, uh, both conscious and unconscious. Pluto's the planet of Pluto's a planet of transformation. So Pluto's in 43 and your Mercury is in 43. This gate is all about insight. It's we, it's part of the freak genius channel. So you have insight. You can look at something that's been looked at for millennia and see it with new eyes. You have a deep inner knowing. So you bring that knowing to your clients. You bring that knowing to business and bring transformation by seeing things in a new light. Hmm. Does this make sense to you? Yeah, very cool. So seeing things from a new perspective aside from instead of, you know, how everybody else might see it. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So that fits your experience of yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely somebody who um, has always beat my own drum, <laughs> done my own thing a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. It's a mutative energy. We call this is all circuitry and we call this everything down this middle uh, individual circuitry. This is individual circuitry. So you're like you're looking at the individual. How is the individual going to show up mm -hmm. and be themselves? You know, you've got that voice of authenticity, that gate one is like, and that's Mars over here. It's very strong. I'm going to show up authentically. I'm going to help you show up authentically. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this for you, your way. Nice. Now, this is tribal. This business is tribal. So we have to bring our authenticity to the tribe. We have to bring what we're offering this unique thing we're offering to the tribe. It has to be palpable and understandable to the tribe. Nice. We together, we, mm -hmm. is this resonating? Yeah. Yeah. So if we go to your unconscious sun and earth, these are the four biggest energies in your chart. If we go to your unconscious sun and earth, your, your unconscious sun is in the gate of the storyteller. You're here to put things in context through story. Talk about, talk story. Tell stories about different clients and their situations. Tell stories about how you might find your way with this. Call people to tell their life stories. What are you doing? Hello? I have chills. Podcast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Storytelling. Mm-hmm. You're telling right. stories around business and bringing business to com dreams and bringing dreams to completion. How do we do this? You're going to tell a story. Now, the earth is in this gate. It's, again, very mutative, uh, individual circuitry, the gate of limitation. So you're working within a limit. You're going to have the lotus come from the mud. Like, okay. Who are you? What talents do you have? What capacities do you have? What structures are you going to use? You put things into a context and tell a story of coming out of that limitation, Bur birthing something out of the limitation. Nice. Does this resonate? Yeah. I mean, I always... I feel that I'm actually not awesome at telling stories like storytelling in general is not something I do a lot or I should do more of as many of my mentors has told me like, you got to stop giving tactical tips. You got to stop sharing just how to videos. We want to also hear more of your story. And I tell my story on my website and I've, you know, shared how I went from working in the startup world to 
you know, the entire team getting let go in one day and then starting my business and blah, blah, blah. But it's not to me, I see stories as like, oh, you have to tell like life things that are really clever and <laughs> things like that. And I'm just used to kind of being like, here's how to do this, or here's, you know, three tips to blank. So I think that's the only thing where I'm like, oh, interesting. I'm a storyteller, but maybe it just means that um, I like to share, which I do. So maybe that's kind of where it's coming from, but I'm curious your thoughts on that. So this is the unconscious. Mm -hmm. So this is, we don't usually identify with this. If I point it out, you might say, oh yeah, but I would encourage you to open to that part of you. As you talk about the three tips, tell Mm -hmm. a story about someone who used these three tips. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Bring it down to earth for people. Yeah. People respond to stories. This is, the story is, is, is right. The, this is right brain circuitry. Everything, um, this is all right brain circuitry. This is right brain circuitry. And it's, it's, this is right brain circuitry. It's experiential. So to allow yourself to speak from experience, what your experience is with this. Where have you seen success? Where have you seen challenges Mm -hmm. to let yourself use that nice we doing okay here yeah this is great thank you so much yeah so your moon and there's many parts of the chart we're we're going through the gates right now Mm -hmm. Uh, your moon is in gate nine conscious and gate 31 unconscious So gate nine is a gate, um, we sometimes call it the ADHD gate or the ADD (laughs) gate. It's the gate of focus. And it's all about where are you going to put your focus? Mm -hmm. The moon is what drives us. Focus is really important to you. What are you focused on? When you have a clear focus, you can go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're helping people look to see. There's so many different things when you're starting a business. Where do we start? What do we do? Mm -hmm. You're here to help people focus. To be focused and help people focus. Otherwise, we scatter. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, and I attract a lot of clients who do feel scattered or overwhelmed or all over the place. And I always feel like I, I do love focus and prioritizing one thing and getting kind of a system in place and all that. So definitely um, makes sense. Yeah. It's a, it's a big deal for you. Focus is important, super important. And to allow yourself to be focused on what you have a yes for, because we say you're a manifesting generator. You've talked about that in some of your other podcasts, you've got a sacral with a motor to the throat. So just being in your presence empowers people. Hmm. You give everybody else a motor to the throat when they're with you. You empower people's voices. Anybody who's on this podcast with you, if they don't have a motor to their throat, it has an opportunity to be heard at a higher level because of their connection with you. Cool. Again, that doesn't mean, oh, You know, yeah, I can have manifesting generator envy, but (laughs) just because you have capacity to speak and be heard, you have that capacity, but you also empower other people. Hmm. So I'm someone as a generator without a motor to the throat that I need to be in relation to other people to be heard. Oprah Winfrey needs to be in relationship to other people to be heard. Wow, She's not out there on her own with her own voice. She's in relationship. So every time you work with a client, every time you do a podcast, you're actually amplifying the person's voice who's with you. Hmm. Interesting. Very cool. Yeah. So the unconscious moon for you is in the gate 31. This is the gate of uh, democratic leadership. So you are a leader. You're a natural leader. But you can't exactly take leadership. You have to be called into leadership. Interesting. What does Does that that mean? 
that means people have to say, I, I want to hear what you have to say. Gotcha. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I do have to, I, I don't necessarily always just speak up just because it's usually it. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Well, and with this Gate 43, to be completely honest, because um, we call that the Freak Genius Channel, you have to be very wise about what you say to whom, when, because you, you're very powerful medicine. You're bringing a new way of looking, and not everybody can hear it. Mm-hmm. It's actually toxic to some people they, because they can't digest it. They can't take it in. And so they can... They can either diss you or, you know, they can pull away because they can't metabolize what you're offering. Hmm. Interesting. So you need to be sure your insights are so potent that the people who you speak them to are ready to hear them. Yeah. Okay. I am very direct. So that (laughs) that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's strong medicine that you have. So you just want to be clear when you speak that, that the people are, it's the right people in the right time and the right place to share what you have to share. Hmm. Okay. Now there's another piece, the chart has, you know, it's a uh, layer. There's another piece that I would add to this, which is you have what's called a five one profile. The one, this is how you kind of navigate life. And this is really good for any coach. If you had your clients charts and you could see, oh, their profile is this, you would know how to support them. Definitely. The one is the investigator. You need information. Mm -hmm. You need to get information. It grounds you. It gives you the information you need to bring the solutions you're bringing. This five, you're here to save the world. You know, you're here. (laughs) Never heard that before, but I like it. Yeah, you like it. Exactly. There's some part of you that probably knows that somewhere. Like, yeah, I have something I'm bringing. I have something really important I'm bringing. You're bringing really important information. You're bringing new solutions. This is sometimes called the heretic because you bring solutions. Again, you've got the 43, but you're bringing solutions that are... um, that are new that maybe haven't been brought before. And so you may not be acknowledged or you may, you may be put on a pedestal and then you may fall down from grace. People might think, Oh, you're the greatest thing on earth. And then you do something or your information isn't right. And suddenly you're not it anymore. I don't know if you've ever experienced Mm -hmm. that kind of being put on a pedestal and falling from grace. Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I think um, I've definitely made mistakes. <laughs> I've definitely had failures. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Nothing specific comes to mind. But that's So we usually think the fifth line are projected on. Like people think you have something, answers for them or have something that's going to help them. Mm-hmm. Does that fit? Yeah, that looks yeah. like that. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and... So we say when you don't come up with those answers, then they're disappointed in you or they. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That might make more sense if I say it that way. Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, I don't know if I've experienced that a lot. I think I've had people who want a quick fix maybe, or want a magic solution or a magic pill to starting a business. And they're disappointed when I tell them there's many steps and we take it one Mm -hmm. step at a time. And, you know, of course they want to control everyone and get a yes, 100% of the time. And when they don't, they may think, oh, you know, we're, we're, something's gone wrong when nothing's really gone wrong. It's just, that's data and that's how a business works. So I could definitely see that. I could definitely see people having false expectations about entrepreneurship. And then I'm a facilitator in that journey. So I could see how, you know, them being let down that it's a process and you have to be patient and that kind of thing. Um, But I will say I've seen a shift lately. Like, so I used to get a lot of people who thought you know, who maybe felt like that sometimes. And now I feel like everyone in the world is more realistic. I don't know if it's after COVID. I don't know if it's because 
Um, people have seen enough bro marketing ads and things like that to know it's not real. I don't know if people are just resonating more with authentic messaging. I don't know what it is, but I do think I've seen a shift in people's expectations and understanding that it takes steps and planting seeds and putting in the work and whatnot. Um, so, you know, I don't know where that's coming from. And of course, there's still people everywhere who want a quick fix, but I've seen like an evolution in the field that people are a little more realistic nowadays. So that's been good to see. So do people um, put their success or failure on you or not so much? Um, sometimes I do think as a role as a coach, you know, a lot of times people want to look for something to attach their success to. And I always, you know, if my clients have a win, it's their win. Of course, I give them tools and things like that and skills and try to teach them sales and marketing so that they know what they're doing and have a focus and all of that. Um, but they're responsible for their wins, of course. So I don't want to take credit for that. But I think, um, I think that it depends on the client too, you know, but for the most part, yeah, I think that I feel responsible for everyone. <laughs> like I tend to be a little bit of a, I want to take, I, I want to control as much of the situation as I can for them and save them from having to go through certain pain points that I don't want them to have to go through. So I do think I put a lot of pressure on myself to, um, perform and to, you know, over deliver. And sometimes maybe that is a weakness of mine because I, I work a lot. <laughs> I, you know, like I get a little, I need to, you know, give space for someone as well. But yeah, I think that is something that has come up for me. Well, I know we're talking about the gates right now, but, uh, and the profile, but that, that correction thing, that wanting to get it right thing, that is actually a blessing place for you. That is the gate, uh, the planet of Jupiter is in the gate 18, and this is the gate of correction. It's very logical, uh, left brain, and, and you, in a very pragmatic way, you want to get things right, and you want to help people get things right. And Jupiter is a place of expansion, so when you bring that energy you can bring as you can support people in their expansion. Hmm. Interesting. Your your Jupiter is also we we've talked about that gate thirty two in your sun, but in your conscious Jupiter is also in thirty two. So when you're supporting people in big dreams, when you're going after your big dreams, that brings blessings for everybody. So you have this crazy incredible chart for someone <laughs> who's doing what you're doing. That's awesome to hear. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you're a coach and you look at a chart, you would want to look at, okay, what's the pr profile? What, how do they navigate life? Are they the, cause so the fifth line, I'll just say that too, while we're at it is really here to work with strangers of consequence. Mm -hmm. So people, you don't know being on the internet, that's a great, great place for you to be working someone yeah. with a fourth line they really need to work their network mm -hmm. their community so they're going to want to have a private facebook group people in there be talking to those people to be developing intimacy and connection really their community is where their jobs were come where the referrals were come nice. very different than a fifth line okay so there's there's different things um if we're looking at the profile, that helps us guide of how we're going to promote ourselves, how we're going to step out into the world. Nice. Nice. You, al you also look at, we talked about a little bit, like you're a manifesting generator. So you're here to like follow your yeses when you're like, okay, do I have a yes to do this marketing? Do I have a yes to be on this podcast? Do I have a yes to write this book? Or do I have a no? Do I have a yes to work with this person or a no to work with this person? You want to really be honoring that. Gotcha. Okay. Nice. You're, I'll just say a, a couple more things and, and sure. we'll see if you awesome. have any questions. So the other thing you look at at the chart, so you look at their type, what kind, there's five different types, what puzzle pieces are there, what's their profile. 
you know, what's driving them. We did the moon, what their sun is in, as you get to know human design a little bit more. But another really simple way is to look at what's open and what's defined in their chart. What's what's defined is what's colored in. That's mm. where you have consistent energy. Okay. So you, you have this channel of charisma, the 3420, that's like, if you have a yes for something, you can bring it into form. Nice. Like that. You have that capacity. Your clients don't necessarily have that capacity. They might have to take a different route to bring something to form. Hmm. So you have superpowers that say, I don't have. Doesn't mean I can't be wildly successful. I just have to take a different route. Yeah. Well, what's very interesting is the kind of clients you attract are probably different types that are missing the parts that you have. And so in any, and same thing with collaborations, the kind of collab partners you have, maybe complement you in a different way or bring out a different side of you. So it's, I would say a lot of the things you're saying about me, my clients come to me struggling with, and then that's how we team up. And that's why we make a great team. Right. So like I have a lot of creative clients or clients and I'm more logical or, and help them break things down or um, I'll have clients who are afraid of sales and afraid to put themselves out there. And that's something that, you know, you're kind of saying, I'm okay with going out to strangers or, you know, things like that. Totally, totally. Um, so it's very, and then the focus, you know, a lot of my clients feel like they don't have focus. So it, I think it makes a ton of sense when it comes to who we tend to want to work with is probably people who we feel will enhance the skills maybe we're lacking or, bring something out in us that we either didn't know we had or maybe needs to be strengthened, things like that. So very interesting. You're bringing out a big point in human design, actually, because this is all electromagnetic. If you think of this as your puzzle piece, your unique puzzle piece that um, needs its life in the world, we hook up. Like, just like a puzzle piece hooks up. Like, like say... um, I've got the gate three, so we create this channel together. I've got the 29, we create this channel together, so this becomes defined. I've got the 19, so this becomes defined. Uh, You know, I've got the 11, so this becomes defined. So when we're together, it's like there's a – and these hanging gates are looking for the electromagnetics. We're like electromagnetically attracted to each other, so that stream will go between these centers. Yeah. So, so there's a, an aliveness that happens and a, a, a connection of possibility that happens when we come together. So we are all of us more powerful together than separate because of these different connections that happen. Right. Very cool. Yeah. So- Any- any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I do have a couple questions just to kind of wrap up. Um, and first of all, thank you so much for sharing this. This is super interesting, very helpful, I'm sure, to the listeners who maybe are thinking about how can I better help that client who feels like I feel like they're not engaging or I feel like they don't like the way I teach things or whatever. And you brought up a very good point at the beginning about how as coaches, we can't just teach what's worked for us. We have to adapt for the client based on what they might need or things that, you know, the way they need to take in information, things like that. So I have noticed that with, and I feel like I've become, because of coaching and so many certifications and whatnot, I almost feel like I have to be a chameleon and I'm always like (laughs) adapting to the clients and what they need and how they take in things. And I have some clients who are like, yep, give it to me straight. Give me the direct steps. I have other clients who are like, I got to, you know, let it flow. It has to feel natural. And, you know, we flush out what that needs to look like for them. So I think that um, this really, this tool that you've shared can be relevant for a lot of coaches. So what would you tell coaches if they were interested in learning more about this? How can they get your book, all all the different things? Yeah. Before I tell that, I just have to respond to what you said about being a chameleon, because this open identity center Mm-hmm. It's like a it, it any anything can be a strength or a challenge. This open identity center is chameleon like. Hmm. 
Hmm, interesting. You can be, you, you shift who you are with whomever you're with. And that's a superpower. But if you're thinking you should be one person or been conditioned to believe I should just be like this, mm -hmm. it's going to be problematic, right? So, so yeah. it gets a little com complex, but you can, you can, you, you don't have any idea with this open identity center. I have it too. So I know you don't, mm -hmm. you're not projecting on someone who they should be or how they should be. You really have space for them to show up as they are and meet them as they are. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. I mean, and as a coach, that is one of the biggest pillars is holding space for your clients and not needing them to be a certain way or not needing to give them the exact answer or as they say, like jump in the pool with them, like get, uh, you know, if they're upset about something, you, you as a coach have to hold space for them. You have to be compassionate with them, but you're not supposed to like jump in the pool with them, as they say. So that is kind of a coaching pillar. So that's interesting. Yeah. And someone with a defined identity center would do it differently, not right or wrong, just differently. You have an open head. You can look at things from all different directions. Mm -hmm. You're wide open. Like, well, let's look at this. Maybe this, maybe this. You have an open Ajna. Like, well, maybe we could process it this way or this way. That openness gives you capacity to be flexible. The definition gives you ground and direction and force. Hmm. So each of us have a dance with this and have to navigate it. So anyway, I just had to say that about the identity center. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have written four books. Wow. Um, yeah, the first book is about your type and your strategy, you know, whether you're a generator, a manifesting generator, a projector, what your puzzle piece is, what your five types are. And that's kind of the foundation of human design. I'm happy to put that in the notes and you can download that for free. Um, I also have a, a link for charts. If you want to run your chart, you can do that for free as well. My second book was on the centers, whether they're defined, colored in or open and what that means. It's a it's a big, fat, thick book. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it right here. It's a big, it's a big girl. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's a big, big, fat, oh, wow. book yeah. on the center. In there. And then I have a book on the profiles, like your 5-1 profile. There's 12 right. profiles. And that's a really thin little book, easy to read, easy to look at a chart and say, oh, my gosh, you're this profile, you're... You, we need to help you investigate before you experiment. Oh, you need to experiment. You know, we have to say with the third line, you never make mistakes. What did you learn? So how you approach someone as a coach is going to be a little different depending on their profile, depending on what centers are open or defined, um, depending on what type they are. I also work with human design and essential oils. Okay. So that's a whole, whole nother arena. Um, and like I said in the beginning, I have a certification training for coaches, therapists, and healers who want to dive in and use this with their clients. Amazing. All right. Well, we will definitely want to list that all up in the show notes. And I would just ask you, what's one of your human design superpowers that you want to share with the audience? Yeah, my superpower, my son, that's a great question. Thank you. My son is in this gate three right here, which you and I connect with. And that is the gate of um, mutation. It's the gate of bringing something new into the world. So I am a, like a creative uh, vortex or geyser. I am continuously bringing new, new things. And human design is one of those new things that I'm bringing to the world. Uh, but I have a different, I don't have that 43. That's one of my favorite gates in the whole chart. But this three is like a, always bringing some, a, a new way of um, bringing something new into form. So I help people bring something new into their lives, new into form with their, their work and their clients. Nice. That's awesome. And that's very needed in today's world. So Thank you so much for doing your work. Thank you for sharing with us today. And we will be sure to put all this in the show notes. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My great pleasure. 
Thanks so much for listening to this podcast. And if it's really helpful for you, I'd really appreciate if you share it and or leave a written podcast review. This tells the podcast sites that our show is useful and it will be promoted to more people that way. Thanks again. 